Miss Enza here and I'm going to be going through some of the things that the children will be learning during the summer one half term. Our topic this half term is 1066, so in history we are making our way along the timeline chronologically. We started with the Romans, we then learned about the Vikings, the Anglo-Saxons and now we have moved to the Normans. So we will be looking at the death of Edward the Confessor, who was the Anglo-Saxon king at the time. And we will be looking at the men who were in line to take the throne. We will be focusing more specifically on the Battle of Hastings, which is where William, Duke of Normandy and his men, the Normans, travelled over to England and fought for the throne. Um, this links really nicely to our English this half term. So the children will be writing their biggest piece so far. It will be a narrative. It will be about the Battle of Hastings and we are going to break it right down so it will take several weeks for them to create their final piece. Um, we will be breaking down the structure of the story into smaller chunks. Um, so previously they would have looked at the beginning, middle and end. We're now going to look at what is between those sections. So for instance, we would have the build up between the beginning and the middle, and then we would have some kind of problem um, a resolution and then an ending with a possible cliffhanger. So I know already that the children will create lovely pieces of writing that they can be really proud of and that they will publish to go on our writing galleries. So that will be our main focus in English. The children will be using all of the skills that they've learnt so far this year in English. Um, so no specific focus on grammar. However, we will recap a lot of the things that they've learned, such as fronted adverbials, uh, expanded noun phrases, using descriptive language, things like similes. Um, so they'll just incorporate all of the things they've learned so far, recap, and just make sure they've got a real understanding of those things. One of the biggest focuses will be on making sure that their openings, their sentence starters vary throughout and they have a range of sentence sizes. So simple sentences, um, compound sentences where they use conjunctions like and and but to make their sentences more interesting. And then finally, complex sentences where they use words like because, if, although, um, just to make their sentences more in depth. So they'll use a variety throughout, which is what many authors use to make their writing more engaging. And then we move through to our science. So this half term, we'll be learning about food chains, which is a really lovely topic. The children always love this topic. They'll be learning about producers, predators and prey. So this is a really nice um, opportunity for children to do some home learning, possibly learning some of those um, different categories before we start um, so that they're they're coming to school with a bit of an understanding. If not, that's absolutely fine because they will we'll, we'll go through it all anyway. Um, but I know some children like to do extra learning at home. In RE, our big question is, what can we learn from religions about deciding what is right and wrong? We'll be explore, exploring this question through Christianity, Judaism and atheism. So um, that question will actually span across the whole of the summer term so lots of different um, conversations there and debates and what the children believe so there's no right or wrong answer it'll be more conversation based in computing we are looking at photo editing another lovely topic so the children will get to um, take a photo or use an existing photo and edit it uh, manipulate it or use tools such as cloning um, to create new photos and I think that's about it for today so thank you so much for listening and if you've got any questions please message me or Mr Eccles on Seesaw we're always happy to help um, I'm sure it'll be a lovely half term thank you last half term in maths year four looked at fractions we looked at tenths specifically and we are now using this knowledge of tenths to help us when we find decimals we know that one tenth is one lot of a whole that is split into ten. We have already started converting these into decimals and know that one tenth is the same as 0 0.1 because it takes nine more tenths to reach a whole and 0 0.9 more to reach a whole. Both are one out of ten from a whole. Using this knowledge, we are able to look at other numbers such as four tenths and convert that into a fraction which will be four times as much. 0 0.4 as they both take six more 
to get to a whole 6 more tenths and 0 0.6 more. Knowing this knowledge, we are able to divide one digit numbers by 10 to find what the decimal would be. We use our place value chart that we've used all year when we are dividing numbers. For instance, when we divide 30 by 10, we move each number down one. So the number becomes three or 3.0. When we are now dividing three by 10, the number will just jump down once again into the tenths column. What we are having the children understand is that when there is a decimal point and they move through this, we need to put a zero in our units column to show that our answer is 0 0.3. So what 3 divided by 10 is 0 0.3. After this, we are looking at hundredths. We know that it takes 99 more hundredths to get to a whole. In this instance, our answer would not be 0 0.1, as that would only take 9 more to get to a whole, but instead it would be 0 0.01, as that would take 99 more to get to the whole. Again, using this, the children are able to count up and recognise that 4 out of 100, or 4 hundredths, is 0 0.04. What we are watching out for is that they are not mixing these two up. One tenth is 0 0.1 as it takes 10 to get to a whole. One hundredth is 0 0.01 as it takes 100 of these to get to the whole number. So again, we are able to use our place value chart to divide by 100. If our number is 600, we know that we move two spaces down for 100. It's one for 10 and two for 100. So 600 divided by 100 would be six. But again, we are looking at one digit numbers this time. So if we are dividing six by 100, our six would go in the units column and it would move down two places. So it'd be 0 0.06. Again, we're trying to get the children to understand that even after the decimal point, even though we've moved it down Two, we need to have the zero before the decimal point. Once the children are confident with this, we are able then to start comparing and ordering fractions. The children know that 0 0.4 is four lots of a whole and 0 0.5 is five lots of a whole. So 0 0.5 must be the larger number. Again, when it comes to the tenths and hundredths, and the tenths, we are showing the children that the tenths is the same as a hundredths. A zero would go in the hundredths column, so we'd only be comparing 0 0.38 and 0 0.40. And again, as 40 is closer to the whole, 0 0.40 would be the bigger number. This is something we're trying to get the children to understand, that just because this number may be bigger does not mean that the decimal is actually larger. Once the children are able to do this, we will start comparing mixed numbers. After we finish looking at decimals, year four will move on to looking at money and they'll be using their decimal knowledge to support them. So we will know that inside a pound is 100 pennies, much like there were 100 hundredths inside of a whole. Then when we are dividing pounds up, we can use our decimal knowledge and our place value knowledge to support us. We will also be able to partition pounds into different amounts. So we know that inside 100p is 70p and 30p, and that would be 7 tenths and 3 tenths of our pound. We will then be able to start looking at the decimals within money. So we know that £5.70 and £5.7p are different amounts, as 70 would be 7 tenths of our whole, whereas 7p would be 7 one hundredths of our whole, as we only have 7 pennies, and we know that there is 100 pennies inside of a pound. We'll also be able to start then converting money. So we will know that £5.70 is the same as 570p. And this again will help support us when we are partitioning our money. Then we will start looking at comparing again. So we know that, that £10 and 200p 
200p, we know that there are 200 pennies inside of a pound, so that would only be two pound. And we know that 10 pound, there is 100 pennies in each pound, 10 times 100, there would be 1,000 pennies inside of 10 pound. So again, we could compare these two or these two, but we know that the 10 pound is definitely going to be the larger one. And again, we'll do this in a range of different ways with lots of different amounts to make sure the children have this strong knowledge of money and of decimals. And finally, we will start looking at rounding. The children have done rounding in all of their lessons before. So they'll be used to this concept, but this time it will be with money and it will work the exact same way. We know that if we have 60p, add 27p, add 7p, an easy way to round it would be to round the 2 down to 60, the 7 up to 30, and the 7 up to 10. And we know that 60 and 30 is 90, and adding another 10 on, we have 100p, or £1. And that will help the children to begin rounding and comparing money.